الحمد للہ وقفا و سلام عباده الذين استفا اما بعد فقط قال حق سبحان تعالی في القرآن المجید والفرقان الحمید اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم جا دل ہم بلتی ہی احسن صدق اللہ علی العظیم My uh, dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Today, I would like to address and speak about uh, the, the burning issue of tafzil. Um, tafzil, my dear brothers and sisters, means um, uh, to regard a particular sahabi, afzal or superior, to another Sahabi. So in the context of Sahaba Ikram, Tafzil means the, the ranking amongst the Sahaba. Um, so the one who is the most superior is called Afdal. Um, I think Afdal would make sense if we contrast these two words, Fadila and Afdaliya. Fadila means excellence. Uh, and excellence, Fadail, Fadila can be proven from uh, Hadith, Khabr al wahid even a single chain of narration Hadith, or even a weak hadith is sufficient even uh, to, uh, to prove the excellence of a particular Sahabi. Whereas Afdaliya, superiority on the other hand, is, has two components, has two aspects. Uh, in Afdaliya, when you're trying to prove the superiority of a particular Sahabi over others, then there are two components because you are proving the superiority of an individual and at the same time you are negating the superiority of the others. So hence, uh, afdaliya or superiority requires, by definition, requires evidence that is definite, that is absolutely certain. This is what the, the ulama uh, in the mutakallimun, you know, the theologians have uh, stated. However, in this series of talks, um, I will inshallah address three issues. First of all, which is today, this talk, is about the nature and the significance or the value of tafzil or afdaliya for a sahabi. What kind of obligation uh, does it carry for us as Muslims to, to believe that such and such person, such and such sahabi or other bayt is superior to others? So today I will talk about the nature of Tafzil. Then inshallah, uh, in the next part, part two, uh, I will uh, give you some examples, furnish some uh, concrete, particular examples in which there was a difference of opinion amongst the Sahaba Ikram, amongst the Tabi'een, and amongst the Ulama, that they considered different people superior. Uh, there was no unanimity, that's what I'm trying to say. So that would be the second part. And the third part, inshallah, will be about the book Matla uh, al and we will try to raise some questions and seek some answers from that book uh, from, from that book inshallah so that's three parts so I advise at the outset I would like to request to whoever is watching this uh, uh, is uh, that basically this whole of the Liyah topic or Tafzil will only make a a sense for people if they watch or listen to all three parts. Um, just one part I don't think is sufficient. But however, this is inshallah what the plan is. Um, so let's so, uh, so let's start here now. Um, so Afdaliya, ranking amongst the Sahaba. And this ranking is for a particular Sahabi over others. We're not talking about groups of Sahaba like the Sahaba of Badr or the Sahaba of uh, Bayt al or, or you know. It's about a particular, specified person being superior to another person. And uh, obviously, um, uh, people, as people do, uh, you could go into uh, the, the, the ayat of the Qur'an uh, park, or you can uh, bring in some hadith uh, and argue from the, the, the verses and from the hadith and present them. But I, I think that would be... Um, a flawed uh, um, approach because uh, interpretations are interpretations. So therefore, 
um, it's best for the uh, for the mortals like us to actually uh, seek guidance as expressed by the imams in this field uh, from the classical times and I emphasize the word classical times um, so that's inshallah the plan is um, uh, and the first of, first of all before I go into what the imams have said about the issue of tafzil how important it is uh, what value does it carry uh, what significance does it have in the in the in the wider scheme of things um, first of all I think there is a misconception which a lot of uh, people have actually asked me as well the misconception is that somehow people think that Afdaliya being superior and being a Khalifa and I mean Khalifa Rashid here being superior and believe being a rightly guided Caliph are somehow uh, somehow have a necessary correlation as if that to be the Khalifa you have to be the most superior. That is some misconception and confusion about this issue. And I think let's dispel this doubt first, uh, this, uh, this misconception first. And first of all, uh, let's look at Sahih Muslim and, uh, uh, and see whether Afdaliya superiority is an essential, necessary condition for being a Khalifa. Here I have, uh, because I have a lot to go through, so... Um, I'll be very quick. I will try to spend less time in, in commentary and I will just give you the, the facts as stated. Um, in the same Muslim, there's a, a hadith or the saying of Hazrat Umul Mu'minin Aisha Siddiqa, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and she was asked, Man kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mustakhlifan la vistakhlafahu. And she was asked by a, a person that who would have the Prophet وسلم, nominated as Khalifa if he was to nominate one? Uh, Khalid, she said, it would have been Abu Bakr. Fakila laha thumma man ba'da Abu Bakr. Then after who? After who? Uh, Abu Bakr Siddiq. After, who after him? Khalid uh, Umar. She said, it would, be, it would have been Umar. Thumma kila laha man ba'da Umar. Who after Umar? would have the Prophet وسلم, nominated for uh, as a Khalifa. And she says, Qalat Abu Ubaidat ibn al-Jarrah. It would have been at number three uh, caliphate position. It would have been Hazrat Abu Ubaidah bin Jarrah. Summa intahat ila haza. And then she uh, stopped at that. So here we have, we know, everybody agrees to this. There is no difference of opinion. That Hazrat Abu Ubaidah ibn Jarrah radiallahu ta'ala anhu was not Afdal, he wasn't superior to Hazrat Usman Ghani, he wasn't superior to Hazrat Imam Ali, yet Hazrat Aisha Siddiqah says that the Prophet وسلم, would have made him the third Khalifa. So this proves that Afdaliya, superiority, is not a condition of being a Khalifa. And, and the commentary of this the particular hadith. I was reading uh, Qadi Ayaz al-Maliki, who died in 544. In the commentary of it, he actually he says that in the taqdim al khilafat leisa min shartiha taqdim al afdal. That uh, the, as the conditions of khilafa, uh, it's not that the khalifa has to be the most superior to be the khalifa. Uh, furthermore, just to uh, endorse or corroborate this this point from Sayyid Muslim, I have in my hand Usul al-Din by Imam Abu Mansur al-Baghdadi rahimahullah who died in 429 after Hijrah. The book's name is Usul al-Din, you know, so that says it all really. Um, in this, there's a, there's a whole uh, uh, section about the permissibility of uh, Khalifa who is, who is not Afzal. And he gives arguments from all sides. So towards the end he kind of uh, uh, makes his conclusions. And he says, which tamaat al rawafidu ala annaha la the juzo imamatul mafdule that there is ijma, there is ijma consensus of opinion of the rawafid of the Shia that the Imam, the Khalifa, has to be the most afzal. So this idea that the Khalifa has to be afzal, uh, most superior, is not a Ahl Sunnah idea. It's actually a Shia idea, and it's a absolutely consensus amongst them that the afzal has to be the Khalifa. This is not the position of Allah Sunnah. He further then, Imam al-Mansur al-Baghdadi says, 
that uh, when Hazrat Umar uh, uh, when he made the committee of six people uh, you know to be elected as the Khalifa after him uh, shura. he says to these people of Shura he says Lokana Abu Ubaida if Abu Ubaida bin Jarrah that is if Abu Ubaida bin Jarrah if he was alive today I would have made him Khalifa over you Ma ilmihi bi anna aliyan afdalu minhu whilst he knew that Hazrat Ali is most afzal, he's at least superior to Abu Baida bin Jarrah yet he says I would have made Abu Baida as a Khalifa and uh, this is uh, Abu Mansur saying, uh, Imam Abu Mansur saying that he knew that Hazrat Ali was most afzal yet he said Abu Ubaida would have made him Khalifa so this proves that afdaliya is not a necessary requirement or there is no necessary correlation between being a Khalifa and being the most superior. And further on, uh, as the concluding remarks of Imam uh, Qadi, uh, Imam, I keep confusing him, Imam Abu Mansur al-Baghdadi, rahimahullah, he says, وَفِي هَذَا دَلِيلٌ And he says, in this statement of Hazrat Umar, there is a dalil, there is proof, there is evidence that Allah anna sahaba taqana yarawna jawaza imamat al-mafzulih that the sahaba ikram rizwanullah alayhim considered permissible considered permissible the khilafat of the one who was mafdul, who was not afzal, who was less afzal. So, a person can be a khalifa in the presence of someone who is most afzal, who is more afzal than him, yet a person can be a khalifa. This is the position of Ahl sunnah and I have read this out to you from uh, the Ahl sunnah Imams. Furthermore, you know when Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, when he... Um, uh, uh, the first khutbah that he delivered when he became a khalifa, you know what he said? He says, uh, you know, you have made, I have been made a khalifa over you, but I am not most afzal over you. So he's, he's addressing like a hundred or maybe a thousand of sahaba and he says, I'm not afzal to you. So this also proves that uh, 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 that afzaliyat was not the condition of being a khalifa by Hazrat Abu Bakr Sadiq himself. Um, and, 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 and you know Imam Hassan, he was the fifth uh, Khalifa Rashid of Islam. And uh, yet we know that uh, though he was the fifth Khalifa, uh, the rightly guarded Caliph, Imam Hassan Mushtawa alayhi salam, yet he, he doesn't find a place as being the fifth most superior. He finds it somewhere after Asham al Bashra, a long way down the line. But if Khilafat uh, and Afdaliyah had uh, if Zafdaliya superiority was a necessary condition for being a Khalifa, then Imam Hassan alayhi salam would have been the fifth most of the Hazrat Umar ta'ala no, would have uh, not made uh, uh, made uh, Hazrat uh, he wouldn't have wished for Hazrat Abu Bada to be the Khalifa. Hazrat Aisha wouldn't have said that the Prophet would have said Hazrat Abu Bada bin Jarrah. So I think this dispels the misconception um, that you, you, you know that Afdaliya most superior is not actually a condition for being uh, a Khalifa. So having said that, so that is clear now, let's move into the core issue that uh, we are talking about today. Um, first of all, and which is like the significance, uh, the value, the importance, or the obligation as Muslims, what, 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 do we, what kind of issue is Tafzeel? I mean, what strength does it have? according to the Imams of Ahl sunnah what did they say about it? Um, here we have al Istiskar by Imam uh, Ibn Abdul Bar, he is a, a great scholar of Islam, he's written uh, numerous large 10-20 volume books, he is unanimously considered as a universal Imam, as opposed to somebody who was a regional uh, person, you know, scholar, some scholars are very regional, provincial, that you know, only uh, his followers, adherents, so in that area people consider them Imam. But Imam Ibn Abdul Bar, everyone considered him, considers him as an Imam. So, uh, and then he's also written Al Istihab, for example, which is about the biographies of the of the Sahaba. And and he actually serves as one of the principal sources for the later authors to write about the biographies of the Sahaba Ikram. So he is an authentic person and a great Imam. He uh, speaks in this regard about uh, uh, Afdaliya and uh, Tafzeel and who should be the most Afdal amongst the Sahaba. In this context, uh, he's, he's talking about in the context of Afdaliya. He says that, وَقَدْ أَجْمَعَ 
اجمع علماء المسلمين ان الله تعالى لا يسعل عباده يوم الحساب ومن افضل عبادي ولا هل فلان افضل من فلان ولا ذلك مما يسعل عنه احد في القبر so he says that there is ijma of ulama of muslims there is ijma about it that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala la yasalu ibadahu that allah ta'ala will not ask his servants on the day of judgment the question man aftar ibadi which one of my servants is the most often wala hal fulan afdal min fulan and he will not ask that which particular person is afdal to which particular person and he says that this is also we will not be asked about it in the grave so the very you know tafzil of the lia superiority or ranking amongst a particular sahabi over another is a question that you will not be we will not be questioned about it we will not be held accountable for it on the day of judgment nor in the grave and let's let's take a moment actually here and just think about it um day of judgment we will be asked about the things that we have done in this world okay now if we have committed sins then we are accountable for those things on the day of judgment what does imam ibn abdul bar means that wala yasalu ibadahu yawm al hisab that allah taala will not ask so if he's not asking us about something on the day of judgment according to imam ibn abdul bar's opinion then that means it's a non issue it is like nothing it's not that important at all for which we are like you know um, so uh, emotional people are like emotional about it nowadays but actually imam ibn abdul bar says that this is a non issue you will not be held accountable allah taala will not ask you which mr a is afdal to mr b no this this is not something that will be asked about on the day of judgment or in the grave so that proves that it's a non issue really and uh, and how does he derive this conclusion uh, imam ibn abdul bar the, the biographer of the of the sahaba you know how how does he derive this position he goes uh, a few lines later he says hada tariq at tafdeel fi zahir in the salaf min as sahaba wa tabeen and this idea of tafzil of to hold people afzal over others and you will not be asked about it on the day of judgment this he goes it is apparent from what i know from the sahaba and tabeen So this is he's saying that I've derived this conclusion on the basis that the Sahaba Tabi'in considered it such that it's not something that you will be inquired about or be accountable for on the day of judgment. So any fatwas about considering people who suspend judgment or consider uh, uh, people afzal to uh, the ones that's not held by you, uh, any fatwa bid'ah or, or anything like that, then please direct it towards. Imam Ibn Abd al-Bar rahmatullah alayhi who died in 463 so he was not like 100 or 200 years ago he's from the classical times and he's like a thousand years ago almost so here's Imam Ibn Abd al-Bar a great imam unanimous imam next we have here uh, the book of uh, Manakib al-Aimat al-Arba by none other than uh, the mutakallim imam Qazi Imam Qadi Abu Bakr Al-Baqilani rahmatullah alayhi he died in 403 after Hijra a very very old imam and Ibn Khaldun says about Imam Baqilani that he says about him that the Ashari methodology was perfected by him so Imam Abu Hasan Ashari died in 330 the Imam Baqilani died in 403 his contribution and his work towards theology uh uh ashariism is so great that he perfected the methodology according to ibn khaldun and you know something my dear brothers and sisters it was it, it was in his time and through his work that you know ashari school of ashaira took a definite shape it was his work he was one of the stalwarts of ashara ashaira so he is a mutakallim tafzil aqida all these things are his domain they belong to his department when the fuqaha the jurists it is not their department to comment on uh, on tafzil on the issue of afdaliya because the issue of afdaliya is about aqida it's not about fiqh fiqh is for jurists afdaliya is for mutakallims 
to his the mutakallim, this is very reliable source in, in terms of aqidah. What is his decision? What does he say about tafzil? He says what in Malaki Ulai Marba, he says, And that which is the strongest, uh, the most correct position in this regard, in, the, in terms of in the, in the chapter of tafzil, that is, he goes, the strongest position in this Bab uh, is, أن الكلام في التفزيل مسألة اجتهاد لا يبلغ الخطاء بصاحبه he, that this matter of tafzil is a matter of ishtihad it's a matter of independent reasoning it's a matter of inference and we know that ishtihad is that which is not explicitly stated in the Quran nor in the Sunnah so it's, it's a matter of analogy, of inference, of independent reasoning and whoever considers any position amongst the Sahaba, he will not be on error. He will not be considered as somebody on, on, on error. Fiha manzalatul fisk. And he goes, it would not be considered fisk. So tafzil, to consider anybody, afzal to anybody amongst the Sahaba, it, it's not a fisk, it's not a sin. It's not a sinful thing to consider uh, one of the leader over other because it's a matter of ishtihad. Ishtihad is that which doesn't exist in the Quran and Sunnah in the sense that um, uh, the hadith of Muaz bin Jabal, you know, uh, where he goes to, um, uh, uh, is going to Yemen. And I will read the hadith to you later where he says that uh, I will judge by the Quran and Azul Spark says, why if you can't find it in the Quran? He says, I will judge it by the Sunnah. And he goes, Azul Park says, why if you can't find it in the Sunnah? And he goes, Ishtahado birai. He says, um, I will uh, use my own opinion. I will do ishtihad according to my own opinion. So ishtihad is that which is neither in the Quran nor in the Sunnah. This is what Imam Baqlani is saying. And he says, Ma yujibul bara'atu lianna al-fada'il al-maraviyyata uh, and he goes, the reason for this whole thing that it's not an either fisk and it's ishtihad and it's, uh, you know, it's not that important is because the, the excellences that have been reported about the Sahaba's uh, superiority are mutaqabilun muta'arizun. They are contradictory to each other. And we know, you know, is a ta'araza tasakata. When the two, so we have one evidence here which uh, claims some hadith which says Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq is the most superior. We have one hadith here which, for example, says Hazrat Ali al Islam is most superior. Now, they both contradict each other, and when there's a contradiction of fada'il, of excellences, then what happens is that it relegates it to uh, speculation, guesswork, estimations. So this is what Imam Qazi al Bakilani, and he further on says, uh, Further, in this regard, in Tafzil says, وَإِنَّ الْإِثْمَ سَاقِطٌ عَنْ كُلِّ مُفَضِّلٍ لِوَاحِدٍ مِّنْهُمَا أَلَى صَحِبِهِ And the guna, the person who considers either Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, for example, most afzal, according to Minhuma, uh, or Hazrat Ali, alayhi salam, most afzal, إِنَّ الْإِثْمَ سَاقِطٌ There will be no sin for such a person. Imam Qazi Abu Bakr Baqilani is saying it. And then he... Uh, 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 this is why his opinion that there will be no sin. Imam Ibn Abdul Bar says you will not be asked about it on the day of judgment. Because obviously if you are asked about it then it will be a sin, wouldn't it? Or, or, or a righteous act. But it's, when you are not accountable for something then it's not a sin. Inna uh, al-isma sakitun an kulli mufaddilin li wahidin minhuma And the, the sin, uh, there will be, the person will be, not be sinful whoever holds either one of them as Afzal, either Abu Hazrat Abu Bakr or Hazrat Ali as Afzal, there will be no sin on such a person. And uh, a paragraph later he says, Haza kissat Ali yin wa Abi Bakr. So he's talking about Hazrat Abu Bakr and Hazrat Umar, Hazrat uh, Ali alayhi salam. And he says, uh, uh, that falaysa min ad and this is not part of the deen and so on. Uh, finally, um, the position, I would like to just uh, show you another position of Imam uh, Qazi Abu Bakr Bakilani and what he sort of admires. He says, فَأَمَّا الْقَائِلُونَ بِأَنَّا نَعْكِفُ فِيهِمْ مِنْ غَيْرِ قَطْئٍ عَلَى تَفْزِيلِ أَحَدٍ مِّنْهُمْ أَوْ قَطِئِ تَسَاوِيهِمْ فِي الْفَضْلِ فَإِنَّهُمْ أَقْرَبُ, أقرب إِلَى الصَّوَابِ وَأَقْدَرُ عَلَى الْإِحْتِجَاجِ And he goes, as for, the, as for the group who considers that we suspend judgment, as for the people who suspend judgment on uh, declaring uh, any particular Sahabi, of to any particular Sahabi, 
He goes, uh, they say, oh, we just suspend judgment. We don't consider them equal. We don't consider them afzal. That's it. We don't say that such and such are two uh, equal. We don't say that such and such a person is afzal to such and such. We just suspend judgment. And what is the comments of Imam Qazi Abu Bakr al-Bakilani about this position? This position, he says, فَإِنَّهُمْ أَقْرَبُوا إِلَى الصُّغَابِ And he goes, they are the most, uh, they are the closest to being correct. The ones who suspend judgment. Who أَقْدَرُوا عَلَيْهِ الْإِسْتِجَادِ And they are most, uh, better, and they are in a better positions to, position to defend their claim. So if this whole issue was a matter of bid'ah and sin, and if you consider anybody else afzal than Shaykhan as a sin and wrong and Bida and Kari and the mouth behind him and all this stuff, then Imam Abu Bakr Waqilani, the Akida Imam, who died in 403, says, the ones who suspend judgment, فَإِنَّهُمْ أَقْرَبُ إِلَى السَّوَابِ They are the, the closest, أَقْرَبُ They are the closest to being correct. وَأَقْدَرُوا عَلَى الْإِتِجَادِ And they are in a better position to defend their claim. So here, why would he say that? If, if, this, was a non, if this was such an important issue, why would he say Akrabu ila sawab? Why would he admire their position? So here we have from Qazi Imam Abu Bakr al Bakilani who died in 403 after Hijrah saying, Look, this is a non issue. No sins, no questions. These are his opinions. Imam Ibn Abdabar, you've already seen. 463 after Hijrah, 403, 403. So can you see the range of time that they are talking this thing? You know, they are trying to tell us that the significance of the zeal, the importance of the zeal, the value of the zeal is actually, it's a non-issue. That's what the, you can uh, uh, understand from their writing, and as I've just quoted to you. Next we have Al-Imam uh, Maziri, rahmatullah alayhi, who died in four, uh, no, no, 544. Yeah, 544. Imam al-Maziri, what is he saying? So, 463, 403, 544. So you have uh, 4th century, 5th century, 6th century. He says, وَمَّا الْقَاذِيَ أَبُو بَكَرُ بْنَ تَيِّبْ says, فَإِنَّهَا يَرَاهَا مَسْلَةَ إِشْتِحَادٍ He considered, <coughs> he considered this matter of tafzeel as a matter of ishtihad, a matter of independent reasoning. Why? What's the, what's the reason why? وَلَوْ أَحْمَلَ أَحْدُ الْأُلَمَاءِ النَّظْرَ فِيهَا أَسْلًا حَتَّى لَمْ يَعْرِفْ فَادِلًا مِنْ مَفْضُولٍ مَا هَرْجٌ وَلَا إِسْمٌ That if a man, if a alim, ahadul ulama, if a scholar from the scholars, ulama, was not even to investigate this matter of tafzeel, was didn't even know who is afzal and who is not afzal, then well, what's the, con what's the uh, consequences of that? Ma harjun There would be no objection upon such a person, and there would be no sin or guna upon this person. Why is that? Because this is not a matter of usul, and this is a matter in which there is not just one opinion, but in the matters of usul, uh, so there is only one truth always. So here he says we have another confirmation and another point of view that ma harjun walaisman. If you go through all your life without investigating the, the matter of afdaliyat, without knowing who is afzal and who is not afzal, not a problem. You there will be no objection on you as an alim. There will be no objection on you. Uh, there will be no. You will not be sinning. So here we have. Uh, three great imams from earlier Islamic times, earliest of times, saying actually the issue of tafzeel is what? It's a non-issue. It's just, um, it's nothing. It's, it's not such, a, uh, 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 such an important, significant issue that you will uh, hold conferences about it and declare people go for By the way, um, on, uh, before I continue this matter, there's this newspaper, and now I walked to London, from 23 to 29th of September, and the same thing is mentioned also in uh, uh, 13th of September 2011 in a um, in Daily Osaf. It's online. You can have a look from the, from that date. There was a conference in Newcastle, and uh, the declaration of this conference is the same in both places. By the way, one is printed on the 23rd of 
September, the other one is on the 13th. Uh, what does it say? It says, Hazrat Siddiq Akbar Khalifa Awal ki afzaliyat. Quran and Hadith se sabit hai. Jin ki afzaliyat ka inkar karne wala kufar ka murtakib ho jata hai. Subhanallah. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. He is saying, in this conference in Newcastle, they are saying the one who denies the afdaliya, the superiority of Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, a kufar ka murtakib ho raha hai. He is committing kufar. I can't believe it. I mean, this takfiri agenda, I mean, they were saying before that all the Wahhabis, uh, the Ubandis are kafir, all the Shia are kafir, all the Khawarij are kafir. And that was really, blanket takfir was really terrible. But now, we have progress. And that instead of all of them kafir, now the Afzaliyat is a kufr as well, mate. So this is, uh, this is, that's why I'm actually doing this whole program, because this is, this is going out of control of all this thing. Um, and just, just quickly about takfir issue, that how this takfiri sect agrees. They call all the khawarij, for example, kafir. And they say to other ulama that you don't consider khawarij kafir, and we consider them kafir, and they really have a go at uh, people that who don't consider the khawarijs as kafir. Now, what is the ruling about khawarij? Here we have uh, Ad-Durru al-Muhtar by Imam al-Haskafi al-Hanafi. He says that the, the traits of Khafarij were Yukafiruna Ashaba Nabiyina, that they used to consider the Sahaba of the Prophet sallallahu as Kafir. And obviously, you know, the, the top of the list was Hazrat Ali alayhi salam, the first Muslim. They considered him as Kafir. Uh, so the, the Khawarij considered the, the, the companions of the Prophet as non-Muslim, Kafir. وَهُكْمُهُمْ حُكْمُ الْبَغَاتِ بِإِجْمَاعِ الْفُقَهَا and he says that there is ijma of fuqaha, and by the way, ijma fuqaha means Maliki, Shafi, Hanbali, Hanafi, all of them, they have consensus of opinion that the khawarij are not kafir. And the reason, and we do not, and we do not consider them kafir, uh, because obviously they do ta'wil. So here we have ijma of fuqaha saying that the khawarij are not kafir. Though they were doing kufr takfir of the Sahaba. They were calling the Sahaba kafir, yet we do not call them kafir. This is ijma of fuqaha on this issue. Now, look at this, and then look at when they say, when people say that all the khawarij are kafir. Aren't they going against the all ijma of fuqaha? So if they can go against ijma of fuqaha, then what stops us having a different opinion from some regional scholar or somebody in 6th, 7th century that's written overboard on things. If you can deny Ijma of Fuqaha on Takfir of Khawarij, then why can't we disagree with an isolated opinion? Anyway, and that was that. Uh, so get, getting back to the significance and importance of Tafdil, um, I didn't want to actually turn this into a sledging match. It's not, it's not what it looks like. Um, here we have uh, from uh, Hazrat uh, Imam Qazi Abu Bakr Bakilani, Imam Al Maziri, and Imam Ibn Abdul Bar Rahimullah saying that the tafzil issue is actually we will not be questioned about it. The, the person who holds anybody else, there's no sin on him, and it's a matter of ishtihad, independent reasoning, which automatically means that it's a matter of speculation. It's, it's a conjectural issue. It's a matter in which there are estimations and guessworks. Uh, about certain Sahaba. So that issue is, I think, is sufficient to clear for you brothers and sisters that according to these Imams, now if any fatwa, if, wants to, if, was, if one was to offer any fatwa uh, about it, then obviously the fatwa should go on these people first. This is the Imam Abu Bakr Bakilani, the Akida Imam is Bidati, Imam Ibn Abdul Bar is Bidati, Imam Mazri is Bidati. Only after him the fatwa should reach people today. Um, uh, next, I will go. Let's go back further in time. Actually, let's go back further in time, and and see what uh, the opinions of some great ulama imams were in the second century after Hijra. Um, you see, there is something to consider somebody as afzal, but on what basis? What is the strength of this consideration? If you consider otherwise, would that make you what punishment? Or what reprimand does the Sharia uh, have on you for that? See, that's, there is no... It's one thing holding anybody as Afzal amongst the Sahaba. 
But one thing is, if you don't hold uh, Mr. Uh, you know, one Afzal to the other, what is the consequence of that? The consequence is no sinning, no question. And according to these Imams, I've told you. Here, look at this here now. Imam Ma'mar bin Rashid, rahimahullah, he died in 154, and Imam Waqib Najra, he also died in, in the second century after Hijrah. Um, this is as sawaik al muhraka by Ibn Hajar Makki, who died in 974, and he reports it from al istiyab of Imam Ibn Abdelbar. But this hadith, uh, this, this saying actually, is also in Ibn Asakir with a Sahih Sanab. Um, and neither Shaykh Abdul Haq Muhaddas Idelvi questioned this, nor Ibn Hajar questioned this opinion. So, what is the opinion? Here we go. Zakara, Abdul Razak, and Ma'mar. And by the way, he says Abdul Razak mentioned, reported from Ma'mar. Now this Abdul Razak and Muhammad are exactly the same chain of hadith and nur. We know that we Sunni Hanafis, Barelvis believe in nur of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It's exactly the same chain. So if this is unreliable, then that chain is that hadith and nur is also unreliable. He says that Qala Abdul Razak says that I uh, uh, that Qala and uh, uh, Muhammad says. The Imam Abdul Razak reports that Imam Ma'mar bin Rashid, who died in 154, he says, Lo anna rajulun qala Umaru afdal. That if a man says that Umar is more superior to Min Abi Bakrin, if a man comes and says that Umar is more superior afzal to Abu Bakr, ma'onifku. I do not reprimand him. I don't say nothing to him. Wa kadhalika lo qala aliyun indi afzal. And if some person says that Ali is more afzal and superior to me, Min Abi Bakr and Umarah from the Ali is more superior to Shaykhain, to Abu Bakr and Umar, then what? Lam Onifu, then I will still not reprimand such a person. Ida Dakara Fadla Shaykhaini Wa Ahabbahuma Wasna Alihuma Bimahuma Ahaluhu. As long as this person who considered Hazrat Ali al Islam as Afzal to Shaykhain, as superior to Shaykhain, as long as this person, he. Um, uh, as long as this person respects and loves the Shaykhin, then I have no problem with it. So Imam Mamar here says that I have no problem with uh, somebody considering Hazrat Umar Afzal to Abu Bakr or Hazrat Ali Afzal to Hazrat Umar and Hazrat Abu Bakr, I've got no problem with it. As long as they love them. If you consider Hazrat Ali Afzal or Hazrat Umar Afzal, but you must love the others, then I've got no problem with that. Um, and then Imam Abdul Razak says, فَذَكَرْ uh, ذَلِكَ and I mentioned this to Waki, Imam Waki bin Jarrah, a great Imam. He goes, I mentioned this to him. فَعَجَبَهُ وَشْتَهَاهُ And I mentioned it to him and he, he was in agreement. He liked it. He goes, wow, cool. You know, he was in agreement with the position. So Imam Mamar and Imam Waki, explicitly we have here, uh, they also held the same position that, you know, they, it's, not a, it's not a big issue to consider who is after to who. Uh, because of the liyat is not a necessary condition for Khilafat. So the, it's not a denial of Khilafat, it's a denial of the liyat. So whoever uh, considers somebody else of the, it's not a problem at all. So now we have from 403, 463, 544, 197, 154. We have 2nd century, 3rd, 4th, 5th and 6th century ulama saying that after liyat, tafzil, is a non-issue. So here we, here you have it right in front of you, my dear brothers and sisters. And obviously, um, uh, uh, if anybody is to declare people uh, innovators and uh, and gunahagar and uh, and you can't read namaz behind them, then people should have never read namaz behind these people. They should have considered them bidditi. Why don't you make a fatwa tomorrow and say, Bakilani bidditi, Mazri bidditi, Ibn Abdul Bar bidditi, Ma'mar is bidditi, and Waki bidditi. Issue a fatwa on them, and then uh, we will agree with you, yes, you are right, you are speaking the truth. But what you do is, people have selective amnesia, that this set of people is bidditi, but this, we leave them, they're, they're, they're okay. Whereas they are opening the door, these people are actually, these Imams are opening the door for us to regard anybody of them. So they should be considered as Muqtade, innovators, dal, misguided, and mudil, misguiders. If the fatwa was to be, has a general application, then you should apply onto them first, because they are the ones opening the door for it. We are merely following them. So, now, to, to uh, explain the, the difference uh, in, in, the, in the old times, 
so here we have that it's a non-issue. There's no question and no sending. Now let me ex uh, let me demonstrate for you that uh, previously the people differed uh, in opinion, uh, had different sahaba as after. For example, here in my hand is I have Makalatul Islamin by Imam Abu Hassan al Ashari, He died in um, he died in 333 after Hijra. What does he say? He says. Uh, so the basis of tafzil have already been settled. Significance, basis, importance is settled. Hence the difference. It says, اِخْتَلَفُوا فِي التَّفْزِيلِ And the Muslims and the Ahlu Sunnah differed, differed in tafzil uh, of the Sahaba. فَقَالَ كَعِلُونَ And the first group says, أَفْضَلُ النَّاسِ بَعْدَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ وَسَلَمَ أَوْ بَكَرْ ثُمَّ عُمَرْ ثُمَّ عُسْمَانْ ثُمَّ عَلِي So the first, one of the groups says, uh, uh, that, uh, uh, that 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 the most afzal is Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, then Hazrat Umar Farooq, then Hazrat Usman Ghani, then Hazrat Imam Ali. This in that order, in the order of Khilafat. And then he says, "Wakala Kailun." This is obviously a Sunnah position, no? And then the next one is "Wakala Kailun." Afzal Nasi Baad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Abu Bakr, Summa Umar, Summa Ali, Summa Usman. And the next group has a slightly different order. He says, first is Abu Bakr, then Hazrat Umar, then Ali, then Usman." But that is also an Ahl Sunnah position, and everybody agrees with that too. Uh, the third position is Wakala Kailun. Nakulu Abu Bakr, Summa Umar, Summa Usman, Summa Naskutu Bada Zalik. A group used to say that uh, uh, the most of them is Hazrat Abu Bakr, عنه, then Hazrat Umar, then Hazrat Usman, Summa Naskutu Bada Zalik, and then we remain quiet after that. We considered all of them. La nufadil ubaynaum, then we consider them all equal and we had no problem with it. This opinion is also Ahl Sunnah opinion, by the way. Where do I support it from? From the Hadith uh, in Sahih Bukhari, Ibn Umar's opinion. He says, Hazrat Ibn Umar, no, he says in there, he says that in the times of the Prophet, وسلم, look in Hazrat Manaqib, Hazrat Usman, it's in there. He says, we used to uh, 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 consider Hazrat Abu Bakr as most afzal, then Hazrat Umar as most afzal, then Hazrat Usman as most afzal, Summa Naskut, Summa Natruk, then we used to remain quiet about uh, any ranking amongst the Sahaba. So this is also an Ahl Sunnah position, though it's a very problematic one because Hazrat Ali Islam doesn't find even the fourth position in this one. He is like the side of the Sahaba, he's just as, as equal as everybody else. So that's also an Ahl Sunnah position, and writing is Imam Abu Lassan Ashari, and you can corroborate this uh, position by Sahih Bukhari. The next opinion is Qala Kailun Afdalun Nasi Ba'da Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Aliyun, summa ba'dahu Abu Bakr. The most of the love that the Prophet was in the next position, another, another idea was that the most of the love that the Prophet was Hazrat Ali, summa ba'dahu Abu Bakr, then after him is Hazrat Abu Bakr. Now, this is some great injustice, you know, because people believe that hadith that Hazrat, after Hazrat Usman we used to remain quiet because Hazrat Ali Islam, comes into uh, equation there. But now they adamantly, vehemently, uh, you know, against this position that uh, the people used to say the Afzal al said the most Afzal of the Prophet is Ali, after him, then he says the Abu Bakr after him. Now, you know, if you was to replace this name Ali with Umar, Hazrat Umar, Umar, Summa, Abad, Abu Bakr, then there, would, there wouldn't be no problem. There wouldn't be nothing. But since the mention of Hazrat Ali is there, you have, uh, everybody's raising their eyebrows. Actually, they're raising more than that. They're calling him Muttaqib, Kufar ka Muttaqib ho raha hai. They're declaring takfir of such a person, astaghfirullah. So here it says, Qala Kailun afzalun nasi baad rasulullah ali summa baadahu abu bakr. So there was also a sunnah position uh, before 330 that the most afzal is Hazrat Ali, then after him Hazrat Abu Bakr. One thing is clear from it, that it's not a Shia position. Because the Shias do not consider Hazrat Ali uh, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq as uh, even in number two. They don't. They uh, first of all deny their Khilafat and, and the, they, there is no ranking system amongst the Shia that the first is Hazrat Ali and then it's Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq. So it's definitely not a Shia position. Now let's corroborate this position. I have, uh, for example, um, Al Fisl by Imam Ibn Hazm, uh, Allama Ibn Hazm Al Zahiri. He was a Zahiri man. Uh, literalist, uh, sort of um, in jurisprudence, he had many idiosyncratic interpretations. But nevertheless, 
the Imams, you know, read all the, the shuru of hadith and all the history works. Ibn Hazm is, is a prominent frame, is a reference point for most of the people, especially when he talks about the difference of opinions amongst the Sahaba, the difference of opinion amongst the Tabi'een and the Ulama. Then he's a point of reference. And it is in this regard that I'm quoting Ibn Hazm, not because of his interpretation. And he is not party of Hazrat Ali, by the way. He considers that Abdurrahman ibn Muljim, the guy who uh, martyred Imam Ali al-Islam, did it out of ta'wil. It was his interpretation. He considered Hazrat Ali uh, to, be, to be killed uh, according to Islam, so he done it. So he, he doesn't consider Abdurrahman ibn Muljim as non-Muslim. Same as the Ijma' Fuqaha, by the way. But that's another subject. For now, we just uh, uh, saying that Ibn Hazm is, uh, is considered in khilaf, uh, you know, in disagreement, uh, opinions, different opinions amongst the Sahaba and Tabi'een and Ulama, he is a point of reference. And what does he say about it? And remember, we are trying to corroborate this uh, statement of Abu Hassan Ashri that the most Abzal al Nasi Bada Rasulullah, the most Abzal after the Prophet was as Dali, then it was as Abu Bakr. So, this is a, each position that I have stated so far, I have. There's an external reference to that position. So here, this position that uh, Abu Hassan Ashri says, let's give another reference that there was such a position. Here he says, um, uh, uh, Ibn Hazm says, muslimuna man huwa nasi The Muslims also differed who was the most after love, the Prophet. He says that um, some Ahl Sunnat, uh, a section of Ahl Sunnat, a part of Mutazla, part of Murjia, and all the Shia considered that the most Afzal after the Prophet was who? Hazrat Ali. And this is the position he attributes to some Ahl Sunnat. So Ahl Sunnat opinion. They did have this opinion that Hazrat Ali was the most hostile after the Prophet, as Imam Ibn Abu, uh, Abu Hassan Ashari is saying. And then he says, وَذَهَبَ الْخَوَارِجُ كُلَّهَا The old Khawarij, some Ahl Sunnat, some Mutazila, some Murjiyah, considered that the most after after the Prophet وسلم, was Hazrat Abu Bakr, then Hazrat Umar. So here are the two positions that uh, from Ibn Hazm, who died in 456 after Hijra, and not a uh, a man near to our time, but far away, a thousand years before us. He is saying that the, uh, the Ahl Sunnat also considered, there was a, a section of Ahl Sunnat that considered Hazrat Ali as the most Afzal, and then after him was Hazrat Abu Bakr. Uh, and then there's another position was that the after uh, another position was Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq was the most Afzal after the Prophet, then Hazrat Umar. And one of the Ahl Sunnat position was that Hazrat Ali was most Afzal, and then uh, most Afzal. Hazrat Ali was the most often. So that's also a position that we can corroborate from external evidence to Abu Hassan Ashri. Just to strengthen this position further, uh, let's, so we've quoted Ibn Hazm, now let's quote somebody else. Ibn Abdul Bar died in 403. He says, When our Ahl Sunnah Jumat, they disagreed. Uh, uh, they they disagreed in between the tafzil of who Hazrat Ali and Hazrat Usman, and salfu aidan fi tafzil Aliyin wa Abi Bakr. That fi tafzil Ali wa Abu Bakr. That he says uh, the ikhtalaf asal the asalf also differed uh, in the tafzil of Ali. And the tafsir of Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq. So here's another evidence, external evidence, that confirms what Imam Abu Hassan Ashri is saying that the people differed in that the, after the most of the Lord, the Prophet was Ali, then Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq. Ibn Abdul Bar is saying the same thing, Al Fisal is saying the same thing. So these positions are all Ahl Sunnah uh, positions of disagreement and not uh, like Shia positions. So here we have. Um, We've, we've seen that the great Imams have said, actually, it's a non-issue. You will not be questioned about it on the Day of Judgment. Uh, they've explained to us that uh, this issue is a matter of ishtihad. And since it's a matter of ishtihad, independent reasoning, hence you have so many different positions. People are doing ishtihad left, right, and center. 
they are saying he is Afzal, he is Afzal. So there are so many diverse positions as regards the Ijtihadi position. Um, uh, for example, you have uh, here uh, Ibn Hajar Makki, 974. And he even concludes, he says, uh, that which supports that this matter of Tawzeel is Zanni is because Anna al-Mujma'ina anfusahum lam yaktahu bilafzaliyat al-Mazgura that those people who claimed Ijma on it themselves themselves uh, thought that this was a speculative and uh, conjectural matter and how does Ibn Hajar Makki know that? kama huwa al-mafhumu min ibarat al-ayma wa isharatihim that I find this meaning from the explanations and indications of the Imams uh, with regards to Tafzeel. And he goes, what is the, why is it, why is it such the case? وَالسَّبَبُ ذَلِكَ أَنَّ الْمَسَأَلَةَ إِشْتِهَادِيَةٌ And he goes, the reason for this is that this matter of uh, uh, Tafzeel is مَسَأَلَةُ الْمَسَأَلَةَ إِشْتِهَادِيَةٌ It's an Ishtihadi matter. It's an Ishtihadi matter. So even him, Ibn Hajar Makki, the writing against the, in refutation of the Shia says the same thing. Um, uh, Sunan Abi Dawood, the Hadith Mashur, I'm finishing because uh, uh, there's a Hadith of Hazrat Maaz ibn Jabal which I mentioned briefly earlier. He says that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Yabasa Maaz and Ilal Yaman, he said, send him to Yaman and he says, Kayfa taqdi ida arada laka kadaun? How are you going to judge uh, when a matter comes f before you? He says, قَالَ أَقْذِي بِكِتَابِ اللَّهِ I will judge according to the book of God. قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ says, فَإِنْ لَمْ تَجِدْ فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ And what if you don't find it in the book of God? قَالَ فَبِسُنَّةِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ I will, uh, uh, um, I will um, judge by the sunnah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. Hazul Pak then replied, he says, فَإِنْ لَمْ تَجِدْ فِي سُنَّتِهِ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمُ وَلَا فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ What if you don't find in Quran and Sunnah? What if you don't find the matter in there? Then what you will do? He says, أَجْتَاهِدُ بِرَائِي As Maaz ibn Jawa says, that I will do ishtihad with my own opinion. So here we have ishtihad is not Quran, not, not in the Quran, not in the Sunnah, but the opinion of a Sahabi he says that it's my ishtihad I will do. Obviously, they, they do ishtihad with inference, with analogy, with the spirit of Islam. But nevertheless, it's not a matter of definite. It's not a, a certain matter. It's, it's a speculative, zanni matter. And he does ishtihad on it. And we know, my dear brothers and sisters, we know that the Sahaba Ikram were all mujtahids. There is a, a, an opinion amongst the Ahl Sunnah. Um, uh, that people consider the older Sahabis were Mushtahid. But I think there was the Mushtahid Sahaba were the great Sahaba, but they all were in a way Mushtahid because Zul Pak did say, you know, you, you quote uh, often Hadith that uh, all my Sahabas are guided and follow anyone you like, a Sahabi Kan Najum, for example. But however, uh, Sahaba Ikram were Mushtahideen as well, and they had differed. So once it's proven that this matter is the matter of ishtihad, and ishtihad as to the hadith of Azul Pak and Sunan Abi Dawood, uh, Sita, that ishtihad, he did it, uh, the Maaz ibn Jabal was doing ishtihad in the things that were neither in the Quran nor in the Sunnah, um, then he used his ishtihad. And we know that uh, because of this ishtihadi position, we have so many makalat of Islamin, and then we corroborated each position from external works, that since it was a matter of ishtihad, Hence, there were so many different positions among Ahl Sunnah wal Jamaat uh, with regards to um, Tafzeel. Finally, uh, before uh, I hope this much uh, we have learned uh, the significance and the importance or the obligations or the nature of Tafzeel in this today's discourse, in this talk. Um, now I'm finally uh, doing the ishtihadi thing that how the Sahaba Ikram's position was. I have a book in my hand. Actually, these names were mentioned by Imam Ibn Abdarbar, uh, Imam Bakilani, and other people. Uh, there are so many evidences on that. But I will just uh, uh, quote an objective Ahl Sunnat Imam close to our times. He died in 945. His name was Imam Muhammad Abu Zahra. He was a Shaykh of Jami al Azhar, the teacher of Hazrat Bir Karim Shah Sahib al Azhar. His, I mean, he's an objective scholar. He, what does he say about this uh, the Sahaba doing ishtihad, for example, on the tafzil, uh, the position? He says um, that the, to hold Hazrat Ali al Islam as most superior uh, upon all the Sahaba 
is it's not just a Shia position. But in the Sabikina Mina Sahaba Tikana Yurazalik, but this position is actually the position of some of the earliest Sahaba. Like Minhum like Ammar bin Yasir, uh, Mikdad bin Aswad, Abu Zarghafari, Salman al Farsi, Jabir bin Abdullah, Ubay bin Ka, Uzayf al Yaman, Buraida, Abu Ayyub, Al Ansari, Sahal bin Hunayf, Usman bin Hunayf, Abu al Haysan, Khuzayma bin Sadit, Abu Tufail Amir bin Wasla, Abbas bin Abdul Muttalib, the uncle of the Prophet and his children, or Banu Hashim Kafa, and all the Banu Hashim. And that is, of course, the Banu Hashim prior to the uh, uh, you know, the, the Abbasid, Abbasid Caliphs, because some of them were really Nasbis, but some of them before them were all uh, considered the Afzariya to Hazrat Bakr, uh, Hazrat uh, Ali, over Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq Anhu. And Hazrat Zubair also had this position, position but then he changed. Wakana min Bani Umayya, and from Bani Umayya, Qawmun yaqulun bidhalik. There was even even amongst the Banu Umayyah there was a group who, who considered Hazrat Ali as the most Afzal. And amongst them was Khalid bin Sayyid bin As. Sayyid bin As's son, وَمِنْهُمْ Umar bin Abdul Aziz, and amongst them was Hazrat Umar bin Abdul Aziz, رضي الله تعالى عنهم. So here we have a, a, a third Egyptian a Sunni Imam also confirming in the biography of Imam Abu Hanifa, that is, confirming that there were Sahaba Ikram who held this opinion that the Hazrat Ali was most hostile to all the Sahaba. My point actually is not to say that Hazrat Ali Islam is most hostile. That is not the point. The point was that there is sufficient difference of opinion uh, found amongst the Sahaba and Tabi'een, uh, which I will come to in my next part and give you particular examples amongst them. And the reason that there was so much difference is because there was a matter of ishtihad. Everybody um, saw some, you know, according to their own knowledge and inference, they considered uh, uh, different Sahabi as Afzal. Some consider Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq Afzal, some consider Hazrat Ali Afzal, and some even consider Hazrat Abdullah bin Masood Afzal, for example, people. So, and the reason was that the, the basis of it, the, the nature of tafzil is such that it's a speculative matter and hence you have so many opinions and all these opinions of Sahaba, Hazrat Pah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Ma ana alayy al wa Sahabi, that you are to follow that which is upon I am and my Sahaba. So when we find from the Sahaba positions of tafzil that are different to the majority, the, the majority has a position, but then there are positions by Sahaba who uh, had a different position. So all the Sahaba uh, uh, are guided, or we can follow any of them in, the posi in, in their opinion of Tafzil because it's a matter of which they are. So I hope this talk has cleared some misconceptions and given us a perspective, not from what I am thinking, no, not from, you know, Imam Ali says, um, La tanzur ila man qala, wanzur ila ma qala. Don't look at who is saying it, look at what is being said. So what is being said here is that Imam Abu Bakr Bakilani, Imam Ibn Abdul Bar, Imam Al Maziri, Imam Ma'mar bin Rashid, Imam Waqi bin Al Jarrah, all of them considered the matter of tafzil as a non issue. And hence, uh, because it was a matter of ishtihad, anybody can, you know. Um, draw an inference, hence you have so many different positions of Ahl sunnah as mentioned by Abu Hassan Ashari and confirmed by Ibn Hazm and Imam Ibn Abdul Bar and also cited by Imam Muhammad Abu Zahra and we've uh, also explained that what ishtihad is, ishtihad is that which is neither found in the Quran or Sunnah if it had found, if there was, if something is ishtihadi then there is no ijma because ijma falls in the brackets of Quran and Sunnah so when somebody is saying this is tihad, it means there is no ijma on the matter. Uh, and especially the ijma, the usul is, I'm not talking about these homemade ijmas. Ijma is that which the usulis have said is ijma. They've defined ijma, and then we find the particulars of that ijma. Now that discussion will be, inshallah, done in the third part when we address matla al uh, I don't know how long I've taken here, but uh, inshallah ta'ala, uh, until next time, وآخر الدعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين